All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular the AWD 1111.NET Framework with Web Databases class, I've been preparing a set of video presentations for the textbook we'll be using for this class for the fall 2019 semester. As you can see on the screen, the textbook is ProASP.NET MVC5 in a press text by Mr. Adam Freeman. Now, when I, I'm to the point where I am, um, I wanted, I made a bunch of changes and I wanted to run the application and I was hoping it would look like this to just show me my basic programming functionality, but I got an error. When I tried to run it, that said I must add a reference. So I went back and looked at this assembly that's right here because I'm not adding that right now. Okay, and again, I just Googled, literally, I Googled how to add, and then I threw the error in there. The entire error that it gave me to my ASP.NET MVC program and this happened to be the first thing that came up all right it was an issue and this was github this was not um, from stack overflow all right back now that I look at stack overflow let's see what they say says I think the solution might be here on this issue of GitHub, which is basically to add what I just mentioned to you. All right, so my hope is this is going to fix the problem. So I'm on my system web. All right. And let's back up. Let's grab the actual this one itself all right I'm going to cut the size of this down so I can hopefully see as much as possible of both of these on the screen at the same time it's going to look a little funky for a moment here all right This is, of course, not what I wanted. That's what I want. All right, so the author says system web compilation debug equals true. All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to have to remove that <clears throat> and all right, so we've removed I want to add everything that is in here. <clears throat> All right, so I added an assembly, as you can see. All right, ended my compilation there and ended this. Now, did I make it better or worse? I really don't know, but I am going to do a file save all I'm going to keep this open just in case I need in fact I just did a save all so let's run the program again see if I get an error as I did before or if this time it comes up so what hopefully what I added was an assembly resource that will allow us 
to understand the meaning of that decimal. So again, what I'm looking for is this. Not an error, but that. Hot dog. All right, so we now have the same thing for viewing the basic application functionality on our screen that you see right here. All right. In fact, I want to check one last thing. It even has the dollar sign, etc. So that's good. All right. So let let's because uh, this is probably going to be a shorter lecture than many. We're only at six minutes. However, because this is finishing up one topic and almost starting another one, I want to go over the information that's in here. Then we'll finish this particular lecture and we'll go into a next one, which will be preparing a database. So the author says here, this is a typical pattern of development for the ASP.NET MVC framework. An initial investment of time, setting up everything is necessary, and then the basic features of the app start to come together. All right, easier debugging. When you run the project from the debug menu, Visual Studio will create a new browser window to display it, which can take a few seconds. There are some tricks that you can use to speed the process up. If you're editing files and not classes, you can take the changes in Visual Studio when the debugger is running. This is what I already told you. If you are changing a .cshtml file, all right, so a view file, and you save the change. You can go back to your browser window, and then all you have to do in that browser window is refresh. However, if you're changing a class file, which is a .cs, the program must be recompiled. All right. It says here Visual Studio 2013 and beyond. Includes a new feature called Browser Link that lets you have multiple browser windows open. I don't like to do that, but the author will show this in Chapter 14. As a final alternative, you can keep your application open in a standalone browser mode, and they show how to do that. I don't like doing that either. All right, so I'm going to come back in just a minute. Granted, again, this was a very short presentation, but I'm going to go over the preparing the database that you see down here creating the database, defining the database schema. All right, so we're going to go over all of that in just a couple minutes. See you then.